Hey friends, today I wanted to bring a really right-brained lesson to you, and this is a lesson on how to take sounds that are kind of boring and unoriginal and you've heard them before and, 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 and make them your own by doing special little things to them. Uh, let's just go ahead and dive right in. The first track, this is, uh, this is a, a great example of what I mean. Here's a, here's a really boring... Really boring, just whatever uh, preset from from analog, um, and and so one of the first things that you know you can do, and then there's just so many different things you can do. But one of the first things you can do is uh, I just slapped a reverb on here. I turn the pre delay all the way down and turn the dry wet all the way up, and whatever settings you have on here, you get a nice. <laughs> You get that nice kind of, you know, spacious, totally different sound than what what was there before. And you know, uh, when you turn the dry wet up on a reverb, all of a sudden you have just about a hundred million different things that you can do, and you have total control when the wet's all the way up. So I mean, you have an EQ here, you have these early reflections, now I, now I have less of a, a low end in there. Right? Choosing quality really changes things. All right, so yeah, that's tip one. Just add a bunch of reverb uh, to it, turn the dry wood all the way up, pre-delay all the way down, and you got a very spacious sound. So on the second track, we have S'mores lead. I, I can't think of anything more vanilla than that. Um, but here's an idea. Take a Redux and drop it in there. Redux is just a... Uh, bit reducer, sample reducer, sample rate reducer thing. And yeah, I like to... Now you have those cool little crackles at the end when you reduce the bits. And then if you downsample... You get that kind of sound. What I like to do is I like to use the soft downsample mode, which, you know, you get a little bit less intenseness and you have kind of more of finesse with the uh, initial downsampling. So what was once a, you know, it was, it was just lacking space and, and, and cool things happening to it. Just turn on a redux. And it has that cool little <laughs> uh, reverb crackle at the end. It's really fun to add uh, redux after reverb just as an aside because it lasts forever. Check it out. Especially if you turn it up real high. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. All right, so uh, number three here, we have a 808 sub bass. Kind of a wiggly sub bass. Sounds really boring. So slap a saturator on it. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen my lessons before on saturation. I'm a really, really big fan of it. But you can get all these cool different... All these cool different uh, tones and timbres and, and, and harmonics and overtones coming out of this originally incredibly boring sound. And yeah, I know it's a little bit louder. Let's get that about the same. <laughs> it also brings out the wiggles, but yeah, you know, that's cool. Saturation on a bass line. All right, so on number four, we have this sound here. It's actually pretty interesting. It's a cool sound, but uh, yeah, it's a preset. Can't roll with that. <laughs> so check this uh, multiband compression move out. You still get that like kind of sameness after the, the, the initial hit, but this is kind of an upwards and a downwards compressor, so you get a lot of like attack on this so it's totally changed the the feel of this it's almost like a pluck now you'd add some more reverb to it and it would really just push that reverb out after the initial hit yeah so ableton's multiband compressor it's a you know, it's an upwards compressor, so uh, especially if you use the OTT setting after loading up a sound, it will push 
the initial hits down after the attack stage, so you still get that nice click, and then it will it will boost the uh, the the tail of any sound that you have. So you get this really nice uh, crazy effect that just like totally changes the dynamic uh, quality of the sound. So yeah, that's another idea for, for changing a preset up. Alright, so here's another uh, preset sound, Jarble Ambience. So that's the sound. Actually, I'm going to turn this off too. So something that I really like to do is extreme filtering. Um, using it, I'm just using an EQ8 plug in here, but as you can see, I've made uh, four is a extremely sharp low cut, and I have a, a three. I'm going to put three on a nice extremely sharp low cut to, or high cut. So now you can really just carve out a certain se uh, section of the sound, and then I'm going to use a compressor to kind of combat the fact that this is going to be a peak sound, that's going to be a peak sound, it's going to peak out in certain frequencies. This compressor will just kind of uh, uh, block those, those peaking frequencies. So check this out now. All right, so we're just taking this, like, originally potentially boring sound, which is this, And we're filtering it down so that we just get this nice, almost as if we're listening to it through a tube. Or maybe through an old radio. Okay, so yeah, extreme EQing. Boom. Another another thing you can do. Alright, so... Bright saw lead. <laughs> Yay. So that's boring as hell. But... I have a little frequency shifter trick that I like to do. Check it out. Frequency shifter can be turned into a really cool kind of phaser sound. Why don't we just why don't we just do it from scratch, huh? So you can see how we do it. Shifter. Basically what this is is the interplay between the dry and the wet signal. If you turn this wide mode on and you just give it just the tiniest bit and you turn the dry wet to like half you get this cool stereo effect going you can also do this with ring mode you just have to turn it down and now instead of uh, not as much pitch, now you have kind of like a like an auto pan. So yeah, frequency shifter is a really great way to just take a sound and kind of just move it around. And to me, I don't know, that just sounds really fat. This is a really fat sound. Yeah. So. Yep, so yet another kind of, it's a warm sound, but it's still kind of boring. Slap some grain delay on it. So with grain delay, you can turn it into kind of like a, I'm, I'm sure you've seen like shimmer reverb, shimmer reverb effects. This is kind of like the first thing that you would do if you were creating a shimmer reverb, is you would take this, this, this spray, And the pitch, and you would just you would just choose. See, like if I, if I choose, like right now, I could just choose zero, and what it would do is just it's kind of just basically a soft delay. But if I turn this up to plus twelve, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of keep creating additive delays that are an octave above. So this original sound is now being delayed, but also going up in octaves. And this would be the, the delay time, right? So that's really fast. So if you want something quicker, you just pull your spray down. Or if you want it slower. 
And I should also say to pull this whole thing off, you kind of need to have your delay time as low as it'll get. Because if your dry wet is all the way up, just like with the reverb, you know, you want your when your finger goes down, you want that sound to start. Right? If it was on sync, you'd have to really wait for that. Okay? So yeah, open up a grain delay, turn the time all the way down to one, and then turn your pitch up, and you get a... Or you could also go the other way if you want to be weird. Deep, deep, deep. I actually really like that. Alright, so now we have a... A really boring uh, fifth, fifth lead. Really boring analog preset. So, I like using a resonator. And I like using resonators with compressors because resonators, because of the nature of being a resonator, the, the root notes that it's set on, as well as the fifths and thirds and things like that, can tend to be louder than the other notes. Okay? So I'm using a compressor to kind of, you know, rein those in a bit. But this is now what we have. Yeah, and so as you can see, I mean, the, uh, you can look up any tutorial on Resonator that you want, but you know, you just choose your root note, you choose how long, how long it lasts. And I really like long decays on Resonators, kind of sounds like you're stranded in a desert. But yeah, that's a really great way to take a, to take a vanilla sound and really take it somewhere else real fast. So here I've just loaded up a classic uh, uh, preset, just the C78 core kit here. And that's really boring, so I decided, well, why don't we put it through a guitar amp? This is a really good move for a lot of sounds. You're going for that lo-fi sound. I mean, the, 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 the soft tube emulations of amps and this cabinet plugin are really great. I mean, just picking random options and just trying different approaches. And you might be like, well, that's just so far away from my original sound. I don't like it. Well, you could always dry wet it. Bruh. Woo! It's bright. That's kind of like a room reverb. You know, let's go. Let's get a little closer. So that's it before, and here's, or this is, this is it before. Yeah, so basically, uh, really with any kind of this, this, this style of filtering, I think a really easy thing to do when you're just getting started is you want each sound to sound individually as big and huge as you can get it. Um, and yeah, I think it's 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 great to go for for a big huge sound, but when you're mixing a bunch of sounds together, like you really want to do the opposite. You really want to you want you want to take sounds and just boil them down to what is essential to your mix. And you know, doing this kind of like extreme filtering can really help you figure out your own sound. And you know, some of the some of the biggest artists in the world are. I mean, like it's it's not so much. Uh, are they making the biggest sounds ever? They're they're using a bunch of different sounds and combining them together to make a really big sound. And each one of those individual sounds is really filtered. So I I enjoy this approach. Um, and there's so many different ways you could do this. You could do it with saturator, or EQ, but this is just yet another form of taking a big sound and reducing it down into something you know bite size, something that you can mix. Like that sounds original to me. You're you know running a, a, a drum kit through an amp. Word. So in, in this last one, this is a trick that I've been doing for a long time and it's something I really enjoy, and that's putting a, a vocoder on a classic uh, just drum beat. So here's just a drum loop I made. It's kind of interesting, but we could make it more interesting by adding a vocoder to it. And there's so much you can do with drum loops and vocoders. Uh, I'm just going to go off on a, on a really fun tangent here. First of all, you have to have it on noise mode unless you've set the vocoder up to accept uh, input from another track. Maybe I'll do a vocoder 
tutorial at some point because it's a, it's a little complicated to get it started. But the other thing I, I really like to do is turn the enhance mode on. So noise uh, carrier and enhance. So now you get this. And a lot of people are just like, yeah, okay, I can mess with these bands or something, right? Yeah, and really when you're working with a drum beat, you kind of want to do that. But one of the one of the other things I like to do is reduce the bands. Because the less bands you have filtering the noise, the closer you get to your original loop, right? So now you can think of this as kind of like a, a four-band EQ. You know what I mean? The fix, fixed band EQ. You can take out some of the low mids or take out some of the subs, leave the lows, low mids in there or whatever. But each one of these band amounts are going to give you a different sound. And yeah, these kinds of bands, you, you choose the higher band amount, you're going to start to get kind of musical results. And what I mean by musical is tone, I guess I, could, I should say tonal results. Okay. Something else you can do is you can, re you can reduce the uh, release time, get it really pickety. And then, yeah, if you're up here in these higher levels, the format really starts to... <laughs> and what the depth control do, will do is it'll kind of soften the hits. And you get that, <laughs> you get that kind of bleedy kind of sound. Sounds cool at lower settings. And then you can just blend it back in with your original. So there you go, fun for days, vocoders on drum loops. All right, so that's just 10 different ways, and, and, and I'm just gonna wanna talk about this real quick. I mean, a lot of this stuff you should combine with, you know, with, with other stuff. Put something through a guitar amp, then run it through a vocoder, and then, you know, put it through a reverb, and, you know, add a bunch of, you know, make these chains nice and long. Like, it's, it's really fun to do this. I'm just kind of showing these individually because it's easier to understand. But I mean, like, in a lot of ways, like, Every single sound that sounds amazing that you've heard before starts out with a, you know, boring vanilla, you know, whatever sound. Right? That's that's the beginning. But you start to add, you know, interesting things to it, you know, you let's just let's just have fun. Let's take this amp, drop it on this. Let's turn the mono off just because that'll be fun. Nice big stereo. Right? Pull the drive it down just a little bit. Maybe we'll take that reverb from the first one. Oh, wow, that's cool. I need a compressor to get a little bit more gain. So I'm going to grab a compressor from... Actually, no, I'm going to grab this frequency shifter. Let's just totally go ham. We're going ham. <laughs> All right, this is going to be crazy. Right? I mean, it's just, it all starts with a very simple sound, and then you just take it somewhere. You make yourself a big, long chain. I mean, it's really, it's really simple. You don't have to have the most amazing preset picked right away. And, and what this is going to do is it's going to open your mind up to, to, to using new tools and then over time, you're going to start to recognize what certain things in those tools do, and you'll know when to apply them to, you know. So I think that the goal in sound design in general is to have an idea in your mind and then eventually be able to think of a, of a sound and have the wherewithal to be able to design that sound directly in live. At this point, I can think of pretty much any sound, and I know what tools I need to create that sound, okay? Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll also surprise myself with some of the things that the that the tools do, and that interplay between like what I want and what I'm messing with becomes almost like a consistently educational experience for me as I'm creating music. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a fun little lesson. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs>